Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It is January 17th today. I know we were expecting Dave back today, but it's all good. He needed one more morning to get his travel handled back to Florida from where he is. And I get to be here and man, am I excited because I love today's guest. I've actually sat down with her previously when she's been on. I've met her in person and hung out at mastermind events with her. She is a phenomenal speaker, an amazing marketer, and just a pretty darn cool human. Um, and I am super excited to know her in some capacity. And I'm Super pumped for all of you to either hear her story for the first time or join us for the check-in um, that we all love to hear from her as well. So before I bring her on, let me do a little housekeeping. If you are new to the show and would like to receive text messages of when we go live Monday through Friday, text the letters WUL to 813 296 8 Five, five, three. And if you would like some awesome legendary swag, t-shirts, hats, tank tops, towels, phone cases, you name it, it's there. Head over to BeLegendary.shop and grab some legendary swag. All right, without further ado, please join me in the comments. Give me some emojis because we got to pump this girl up, <laughs> get excited, um, and help me welcome M. Walcott to the show. Good morning, M. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So it has, it's been a journey. It's been a ride. It really has. I know I'm getting close to um, being at the two-year mark yep. of my online journey, and it's just, it's wild. <laughs> It is. So let's, for those that are new and don't know your story, because you have a pretty cool story of what it looks like to have perseverance, determination, yes. to figure this out at the beginning. So share with us, let's, let's rewind two years. Yeah, so it's 2022, February, March, where your situation was and how you found the challenge and what you did to get through the challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so funny. I like to remind myself of that because sometimes I like forget where we were um, because, yeah, in March 2022, I was still working part time as a recreational therapist. So I worked in home with kids. And that my husband did concrete. So my husband would work all day long. And then I would work in the evenings and drive, you know, hour there, hour here to different clients. And it was a lot. And even though we were both working, we both had good jobs. We were still struggling. And it got to the point where literally, and it's so funny because I remember sharing this with you too um, mm -hmm. before, like our Wi-Fi got turned off. And I used to be so like ashamed by that, but I'm not because it's totally a part of my story. And um, when that happened and we kind of were at the point of like, okay, what are we doing here? Like nothing's getting better. I don't know what else to do. And I do not want to continue to leave home. I really want to be at home with my girls. Thought that was super important. So I kind of turned to the online space, but I didn't have internet. And we lived in a neighborhood that literally didn't have like any service. So in order to start my online journey, um, and then even when I got started figuring out what I want to do and how I want to move forward, I would have to get in my car and I'd have to drive at least far enough where I could get 5G to post anything or even to like go through things and learn. <laughs> or I would sit outside places and use their internet, like whatever public mm -hmm. Wi-Fi they had. So right. I was doing that a lot. Like, and even like I have three kids, so I would load up my kids and I'd be like, all right, guys, grab a snack. We're going to, we have to run an errand. And I would, my errand would be running into town so that I could get internet to like get my business running. Right. So that was a hustle. It was definitely a hustle. And it was something that, I don't know, I felt so called to it that I just knew I had to do it. So Definitely determination and grit 
for a yep. very long time. Um, yep. That wasn't just like for a couple of weeks you did that. And and you weren't posting once a day at that point. You were, you were in it to win it. You were posting yes. multiple times. You were taking multiple trips into town. I'm throwing the kids in the car. We got another, another field yes. trip. Let's go. Quick drive. Uh -huh. I would find like any park I could find that I would think that there would be Wi-Fi for it. Like, and it's so funny because people look at that and they're like, it's, it was 2022. There wasn't internet. Well, like I live in the country. There is not like easy internet everywhere. It was like cable internet that didn't work. And it was so expensive. Like it was wildly expensive and we just could not afford it. So I'm like, okay, you know, that had to go. Well, really kind of, they took it, but it went. And then I was like, what do we do? And I feel like I could have just sat and it would have just got worse and worse and Instead, I'm like, nope, I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep packing the snacks. Keep driving as far as you can. Um, and it wasn't until, like, honestly, a year into my journey that we even got, like, good internet. So, I mean, it was a lot of going to other places or public libraries. You know, mm -hmm. if you got kids, they got Wi-Fi there. They got a play mm -hmm. area for your kids. Um, churches that had play areas. They got Wi-Fi there. They got sitting areas. And a lot of them are open 24 hours. So, like, I found a lot of hacks like that of, like, oh, like, churches don't really care if you come sit, especially if you find a church that has a dance studio. If anyone has any of those around, they have Wi-Fi, and you can go and sit in them. So it's really, like, <laughs> I had to do a lot of work to figure that out, but I did it, and I stayed committed to showing up, whether that was having to drive somewhere or sit outside somewhere. Right. And, and that's – that's what I hope everyone grasps from, from hearing your story is I, I think the theme of last week and this week has been what it looks like when quitting isn't on the table. Yes. When it's just not an option. It was literally not. <laughs> you just it were like, all right, not. what do I got to do today to figure it out? I've never had that thought. I've always had that thought. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been plenty of days where I do not mm -hmm. want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't mm -hmm. want to show up to my business. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's 10 at night. And I'm like, well, what have I done today? But I just continue to do it. I continue to put the next foot forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I don't want to say there was never a thought, but in my mind, I just knew if we, if I quit, we have no backup. Like we're in the position, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's a huge driver in being successful is when you don't have anyone to rescue you know, like we had no one to rescue us. We had no one to show up when we were struggling to pay our bills. We had no one that was like, let me help you out. Let me do this for you. We didn't have that. So once you realize that and you switch your mindset of like, no one's coming to save you. You're not going to get a random whatever in the mail to help you out. Like you have to do it yourself is when I realized like I can't quit. I have to make this work. And I told myself if it doesn't work, for the first, I think I said six months, if nothing works, it does not matter. You will still show up for the same amount of time, doing the same mm -hmm. amount of thing for six months, no matter what. If it's zero at the end of the six months and you have no, you, <laughs> as long as you're showing up, that's what matters. Yeah, definitely. And for those that just joined us and hearing her story, let me give you a super quick recap. So you, you didn't just start, you are almost two years into your business. For almost the first year, you didn't have internet at your house, <laughs> and you were, you were made the commitment to post multiple times a day, and I'm going to put a huge disclaimer right now. Your results are not typical. You no. have, there is no guarantees. This mm. is your truth, your story. We don't promise this. Um, but life has changed significantly for you um, yeah. from this business. But it, yeah. it did take a lot of hard work. It did yeah. take time. It did take pushing through days that were hard. And I think a lot of people see the successful marketers and they're like, it's mm -hmm. easy. They're just happy all the time. So share. I work you know, hard to make it look easy. That's, so I say that a lot. Like people think you look at someone who looks really healthy, right? Like mm -hmm. it looks easy. But you know that showing, I know, because I don't do it that often, showing up to the gym is really hard. <laughs> right. So it's like I, I work hard to make it look 
easy. But at the same time, yeah, it took, I knew nothing. Like I literally knew nothing. I was a therapist. Mm -hmm. Like I knew nothing about socials. I knew nothing about the online marketing space. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing I really knew was I had listened to some podcasts. I knew it was an opportunity, but I literally knew nothing. I've had to continue to learn over and over and over Um, which is exciting for me. I want to learn new things. I feel like before it's like you go to school, you get out and then you're just done, right? Just keep doing the same things. With this, I've had to challenge myself and continue to learn new things and new skills and change things. And I love that, but that's that's not super easy to want to change or be open to change that's happening around you um, and learning to adapt to that. But I'm happy I've done it because our life is drastically different. Um, Mm -hmm. my husband is currently upstairs homeschooling our three girls because he's tired. (laughs) No longer doing concrete. Correct. He's not doing concrete. He's been home now for Mm -hmm. over seven months and it's been Mm -hmm. awesome. It's been really, it was really weird at first, but it's been such a blessing. Um, so he is home full time with us, which it's snowing like crazy in Michigan. No one's left their house in like five days. And it's so nice because he used to plow. And last Christmas, I remember he plowed all night. So he missed Christmas morning with our girls. And I said, never, like never again, never again. I don't want you to miss that stuff. And now like, he's like, thank you so, thank you so much. Cause he would have been out all night, all day plowing. And at times Mm -hmm. it wasn't even safe. Like they'd be like, plow all night, get two hours of sleep, plow again. So it's been really awesome. He's home and we love it. And if we ever want to get out of the snow, we have the ability to, you know, we can work from anywhere. So we can mm-hmm. hop on the next plane and get out of here. <laughs> so it's really wild the difference that our, our life from when we started to where our life is now. So let's talk comparing two years ago, not let's not talk income and that sort of thing. But what did you what have you what's changed about you? From uh, that version of M to your version now, what have you seen as the biggest change over that time? I've healed a lot. That's like very personal, but I've definitely healed a lot. Um, I feel like I never really, not that I didn't believe in myself, but I definitely thought I was a quitter. And now I refuse to say that because I'm not a quitter. I just yeah. never was in the right opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I'm not a quitter. I am a hard worker. And I, I never really believed that until I actually found something I was passionate to work hard at. So, and I think just the confidence that I have now, I never had that confidence. I always played small. I always kept my head down. I never, I always second guess myself in every situation I was in. And mm-hmm. I feel like now I don't like, I feel like I have something to be said and it's a good message and it's a helpful message. Um, and so it's really nice to understand myself more and be proud of who I am and be able to, you know, not stand out in a room, but feel like I can be who I am and be confident in that. So I'm a completely different person, absolutely different. And I know that because people that, you know, maybe we hung out with two years ago and they can see that. And our circle has gotten much smaller um, (laughs) because when you switch your mindset of like wanting to live life in a different way, you have to do different things. Like my habits are different. Um, What I spend my time doing on the weekends is different just because I want to be a fully healthier person just in general, you know, like mental well-being is a hundred percent better than it's ever been because I actually have time. I have time to reflect and, um, take care of myself, which was never a thing before. Never. Wow. That's huge. And, and I I think that's important to realize too, that with change, a lot of other things change like your friend group, (laughs) right? Because they just don't align. You're not, you're a new, amazing, badass version of yourself moving forward. And Sometimes the people that don't want to also go through their own self-growth, their own self-care, they just don't match. Well, they get very uncomfortable. Yeah. And and like, they get they can get nasty too, <laughs> honestly. Very. Oh yes. Oh yes. Um mm-hmm. 
when you start to realize that you're not really happy or that you don't really jive with the typical lifestyle of the people that are around you, they instantly take it as a personal dig. First, just saying, I want something more. And I was always scared to say, I want something more. I was scared to say Mm -hmm. that I don't just want to be a content stay at home mom. Like, you know, like I always Mm -hmm. thought that's what I wanted. But the Mm -hmm. second that you start to say, no, maybe I would like my husband around more. Maybe I would like to travel more. Mm -hmm. Most people don't believe it's possible. So the second you say that, it's like, a well, how would you ever think you can do that? And they don't even want to open their mind to that, that being a possibility. So then you're just, you're just an, an alien. You're just someone that they do not relate to. And don't yes. right? That's the, like, yeah. Oh, you're now thinking only of yourself. You don't care about anyone else. <laughs> like my voice. <laughs> Cause it's so common that that's like the, the party line for anyone that has growth going on and someone in their life that, just can't get on board with it because they're uncomfortable because they don't want to grow. They want to stay stuck. Must be nice. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. what I, I hear that all the time, like out loud. Oh, must be so nice. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You can think that, right? But right. I put in the time, I put in the work, and um, yeah. I'm allowed to be where I am. So I think, Absolutely. yeah, you have to be prepared for that. And you just have to be pre- prepared for shifting your priorities. So many people like you want to be dedicated to this, but then you're like, well, every weekend I'm busy and I'm doing X, Y, and Z and I have a taco Tuesday night and I have a girl's night and I have a this night, which is great. But I just chose that my end goal was much more important than those things. And some people have a really hard time with that. And the friends who realized that, who actually saw my struggle, didn't care. They said good for you. But the people that, you know, we're like, why are you doing that? Why why is that more important? Just didn't understand the end goal. Mm-hmm. And they never will because they're content and happy where they are, which is fine. But that's right. not where I want to be. Especially right. not for the rest of my life. Yeah, exactly. And and there's going to be moments, even as you start feeling some wins in your business, where the days are just hard. Right? It's very hard. And it's I want to, I want everyone to understand that that's normal. So yeah. how did you, when the, when the, when you're in the, the valley of despair, you feel like nobody's watching your videos yeah. or, you just, or you just don't want to make another video that day, but you know, you got to keep showing up for your audience. How did you push through? Make your reasons why bigger than your excuses. Mm-hmm. So that. Is something that's really important. I think people see people that are successful in any field and they think it's just easy breezy and it's always great and everything's easy and they should just be so happy. And I feel like I've tried to be really honest with this. I have had big imposter syndrome moments. I've had big moments where I'm like, I I might as well just close all my accounts. I might as well be done with this because I just, I'm not creative. I have no energy to be creative. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Like there's all those thoughts. And I, there's, there has been moments where it's not just moments, it's days, it's weeks Mm -hmm. where I get in my head and I am overwhelmed and I feel like I don't know what I'm doing because this is all new. I have to stay a learner. Right. Right. And my husband always says, if you can do it once, you can do it again. If you can do it once, you can do it again. And he repeats that to me. Know who you are. Know what you do. Know what your reasons are. And the second I revert to that and say, okay, what is making me feel like this? You know, is it really like that I suck, right? Is it really that I don't know what I'm doing? Or is it that I haven't poured into my cup? Have I not filled up my cup enough? Or have I not you know, sat down and put the education in that maybe I'm lacking. Maybe I haven't done that in a while. Right. It's always something that I'm in control of. But if you sit there, you feel so out of control that you just get that analysis paralysis. You stop. You don't know what to do. Instead of realizing you are in control, calm down. What is your main reason for this? Take a breather. And, and, and I, people are so afraid to like slow down for a little bit. I do that a lot in the month of like December 
Mm-hmm. I say, you know what? Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to heal myself this month. I'm going to take time for myself. Like if you're mm-hmm. feeling that you still have to show up. Right? right. But know that you're just showing up and give yourself a time limit. I'm going to, for two weeks, I'm going to breathe. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to do the bare minimum. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but let yourself do that and give your date to say, okay, but the second I get to this date, I'm going to go full bore and I'm not going to stop. So I think allowing yourself to feel that, to recharge, to pour in yourself and then be ready to pour it out. um, That's a big uh, tip and a big thing that I use all the time when I'm in that mindset. Yeah, it's really, I hope everyone's seeing the the big picture here, what the long game looks like and everything that you experience, even at the beginning, it's going to be there. They're going to creep back up those thoughts, those worries, imposter syndrome will never go away. It will never. It will never never go away. (laughs) It's always going to be there. You got to use it to encourage you. Right. And I want to tell you, because you said something, I, I want to reinforce this and just give you a massive compliment. One, you are one of the most creative marketers out there. Oh, thank you. And two, you are a masterful, masterful storyteller. Thank you do you. it with ease. You do it very well and you can weave it very well. So yeah, you're going to have days where I'm not feeling creative. It's <laughs> all gone. My stories are gone. Everything's gone. And yeah, taking a break, <laughs> separate for a minute, remembering your why, remembering yes. your power. Yeah. I have a whiteboard. Like I have like a whiteboard. This is my new office. So every other wake up legendary I've had to do on my kitchen table. I have a brand new office. That's Ooh. all mine now. So nice. here's my office. Um, mm-hmm. But I have a whiteboard. And anytime I'm feeling that way, I just do a dump, like a brain dump. I, w- I write down anything that is in my head that I think is going to be great. And then mm-hmm. I just get it out. And then I cross out any crappy ideas. And I find like the little goals in there. So it's like you always have it in there. It just takes a second to unjumble your thoughts. Because yeah. mine can run so wild. But I also really appreciate that. I love storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something that I just continue to try to evolve with. But I think everyone's story is so powerful. I just, I love seeing other people be vulnerable and share that side of them and really know their why. And the second someone knows their why, they want you to win. They want you to win in life. Mm. And I think that's just so important to continue to realize like your story and why you're showing up every day is important. It's not just important for other people. It's also important for you. Um, And I think it gives you much more um, inspiration to continue to move forward. Yeah. And so I think just knowing that, knowing, you know, why you're there and what you want and envisioning Like, that's a huge thing for me lately, just envisioning where I'm going to be in the next year and really saying that out loud. We're so afraid to say our goals out loud because we don't want to be held accountable to them. And I was like that when I first started. I was like, oh, you know, I'm like, if I don't make anything, it's going to be fine. And then when I started to um, get more in affiliate marketing and started to really like be really proud of anything that I was promoting, it was like oh, maybe I do want this. Or I kind of want this. And then now lately, I'm like, it's more about like, I want to envision myself somewhere in a year. Like, what does that literally look like? Where am I? And what am I doing? And how are my kids looking? And how is my husband feeling? And that's just so powerful. Like when you see that every day, and you think about that every day, it just gives you so much energy to show up to your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also it then it, it just helps you go, okay, so what do I need to do today? That's going to help me make that a reality. Yes. Because it's got to start right now. I can't yeah. have that in 12 months if I'm just sitting here thinking about it. I, yes. I, I can't be getting ready to get ready. That's what I love. You got to stop getting ready to get ready. Because we yeah. see those comments. I'm getting ready to start. I'm getting ready. Love you too. <laughs> My daughter just opened the door. She's like, love you. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you have to decide I'm going to take action. You have so many people. I cannot tell you how many people. I don't care what it is you're promoting. I don't care what it is that you are an affiliate for. I've seen so many people that I talked to them a year ago 
and they have the best plan for, they have the best, they know exactly what they're going to do. They have like most of their stuff set up. Never. They don't do anything. Mm -hmm. They still show up every single week. You know, they, some people come to my zooms, they message me, they encourage me, but they never show up to their own business. And I've got to say that if you guys are showing up and getting information, which is wonderful, you need to show up, get all the education, but that is not serving your business. If you're doing nothing with it. So many people think by showing up, I'm like, you got to go do something with it. Go do something. I mean, even like everybody that's here, right? Write down a goal for after your wake up legendaries. You guys are so awesome at showing up, write it down and then go do it from every person that you see. There's got to be something that they give you so much amazing information that you should be able to, the second you get done, go take an actionable step. So you have that accountability, right? They can show up here every single day. They can get an actionable step and go and do it. If you watch these and you just watch them mm -hmm. and then you don't do anything with it, you are you are not doing what you should be doing. You right? have to take that. I would say if you, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I would say if you do nothing but watch Wake Up Legendary, you could get at least two pieces of content from that interview to yes. share in your videos that day and never bring a makeup your own. I, like you have something to share, write an email about something. Yes. Always. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, I, I think of that all the time and I, I will do, I'll like set a reminder, like go check out the wake up legendary, like go listen to it this morning. Like I'll send it out to my email list. Like make sure you're listening to it because if you are stuck right now, like you can get so many actionable steps. So it's there, this, the information's there to take an actionable step, but people just consume, consume, consume and don't go that next that next mile, which I feel like is so important. Like that is the biggest thing is taking that next step. And, right. you know, look at my perfect example. My videos were not perfect. My lighting was horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I literally nine times out of 10 was in my car with my kids in the background. When I, I have been live numerous times and it's a uh, dumpster fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kids everywhere, noise everywhere. I'm folding laundry, making dinner, but it, I do it. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, you can do it. I promise yeah, you. Cool. The last time you and I were on together, you had a kid fall down the stairs in the background. <laughs> with rollerblades. With rollerblades. <laughs> right? and usually the other two times with Dave, I have my old dog that whines. <laughs> So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to be a, be in an office when I do this call instead of having children and dogs and neighbors knocking and wild things occurring. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to, let's, 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 let's have a little controversy. There's someone okay. in the comments and they said, we're, I'm doing all those things and I'm not making your money. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to assume something. And I want everyone to really put their marketing glasses on and be able to look at their own content. Are you focused on income or are you focused on serving? Are you focused on getting something from someone in your content, in your emails? Or are you focused on giving, providing and connecting? When you hear that, um, what, what can you add to that? I 100% agree. I think there needs to be, I, I was just talking about this last night. Um, mm -hmm. One, I want to say everybody wants huge followers, right? Everyone wants the huge mm -hmm. following. And again, this is a huge disclaimer. This is, I know my results are 100% exceptional. But when I had my first six figures, when I was in affiliate marketing, I was on one platform and I was with 40,000 followers. The reason why people I feel like don't always, no matter what they're doing, convert or because you're so focused on getting people into your funnels in affiliate marketing, you're so focused on but instead, you're not actually building any sort of relationship with your content. Right. You have to build a relationship with your content. I've seen so many people that have, oh, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I have followers. It does not matter unless there isn't a connection. There has to be some 
sort of emotional connection, no matter what it is that you're promoting, because no one is going to take action unless they, I always say this to other people, making more money is not actually a motivator because if it was, y'all would have three jobs, y'all would be saving money. You wouldn't be spending money at the gas stations. You would be investing You're Mm -hmm. not doing that because money actually isn't motivating you. Money isn't someone's motivator. Having more time Mm -hmm. with our family is a motivator. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your content and that's all you're trying to motivate people with, one, that shouldn't even be the point of your business. Right. Two, it's never going to make people on the other side trust you, like you, know you, want to do anything with you other than follow your story to probably do that and say, well, you're making that, but I'm not making this. Nine times out of 10, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So I think just really the biggest thing that I will say is, do you feel good about the content that you're creating? Do you love it? Now, don't get me wrong. There's times where I can't stand it, but nine, the other times I love it. I'm on fire for it. I'm passionate about it. People see that on the other screen. If you are Mm -hmm. just doing it to do it, then you should, no matter what niche you're in, if you're not liking any of your videos and you're just doing it to do it and copy and paste it, find another niche. One. Yep. I would agree. (laughs) 100%. Where's my hat? (laughs) Yeah. So many people are scared of that. And I've seen so many people do that and flourish. Like I truly have people that I get on, you know, Mm -hmm. one-to-ones with sometimes and like they are so stuck and then I'm like it sounds like you're really passionate about something else why are you not doing that Mm -hmm. and then and then they they do amazing with that and so I think Mm -hmm. like you have to look at your content and be like are you boring realistic some of my videos are boring I look and I'm like I have no facial expression um Camilla is really good at like she is so and I the first time I met her and I saw her make her videos I'm like Oh, I got some work to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think you just have to remember, like you have to be feeling really good about your content, feel really good about it. And if you don't feel really good about it and you're not having fun with it, you need to figure out how you can switch it in order to do that. Right. It's, it's not a, when you're on social media, it's meant to be social. It's not about focused on what you can get and get somebody to buy. That's not the main focus. That's the result that happens when you go on to find your people, find your, the people that you want to be online friends with. Yes. That you want in your community, because then when you start creating content that matches and meets your audience, then they start engaging and yes. then you get more excited because now you have these cool online friends that are into what you're putting out there. And then oh. you get more creative and you get more excited to share more of your story and have fun with your content and be silly because you're finding your people. Yes. You want the engagement, right? Like mm-hmm. you want engagement. You want honest true engagement not just I'm engaging to engage I'm engaging <laughs> like no you want that engagement and I remember when I started sharing my story when I really started being vulnerable at first it was scary and then it was the most wonderful thing I've ever experienced because for once I was validated and I wasn't doing anything wrong and there were so many other moms that you know maybe live in small towns and it's supposed to be the moms at home and the dads at work And I used to feel so uncomfortable with that, but I was told that's what Mm -hmm. I should do. And the second I started sharing that online, like I want something for myself. I don't want my husband to work 90 hours a week. I would have so many moms that would be like, I totally understand that. I always feel like I have to put a mask on. Like I'm so content. And it was like, Mm -hmm. I just felt like the more I poured myself out, the more true, honest engagement that I got. And it made me just want to continue to be open to not only reach those moms, but also get that feedback for myself of like, I'm not alone. Right. (laughs) And yeah, and that's, that's really what it's about is it's not, it's about connecting with someone that relates to you and your story. 
Yes. Little pieces. So you've got to be able to be vulnerable. And it's not sharing your whole mess in one video. It's just no. like little tiny little micro moments of the day. Don't go and load all the pain of your life in you know a 10 no. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but find no. you know, there's moments where you just are like, oh, I gotta send this to my friend. Because yes. we were just talking about this, that same thing happened to me with my kid last week. Or, yes. oh my gosh, the laundry is absolutely driving me crazy. Because no. you the way you weave your content in is you have the, the messy house or yes. the laundry is sitting or homeschooling or, you know, All different things. It's, it's how you, you, you weave it through and it's how you connect to your audience. Yes. They don't want to hear the 800 things that you have going wrong right now. They don't. Right? right. A lot of times that's why I say you have to really figure out what your reason why is because nine times out of 10, your reason why is what you should be sharing. And your reason why is not going to be like 8,000 things, right? It's probably going to be like one or two things in categories. Once you really list your reasons out why you usually can break them up and then figure out what those categories are. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely, they don't, you know, people are busy with their own things. They're stressed with their own things. So they can't take on all of your things, but they want to relate with you on a couple of those things. And that's mm -hmm. where it's like when I tell people affiliate marketing is not influencing, but you can learn so much from people that do influence because who do you follow? You follow people that you 100% relate to. You want to see what they're doing because you feel better about yourself when you can relate to them. Or you're watching someone that you want to relate to or that's doing something that you really hope that you can do. And nine times out of 10, anyone that's in the influencer, it's they're not saying, you know, this is what me and my husband make. They're not saying, hey, check out my new this. They're just showing their daily lives. Right. That's it. They're showing their daily lives and they're showing up who they are and how they feel in that moment. Go mm -hmm. to any any influencer that you enjoy, whether it's a cooking person, whether it's a houseplant person, whether it's a mom person, whether it's a uh, fix it dad person, they are giving you tools. They are letting you come into their lives. They are um, sharing their their stories in a way that no, they're not dumping everything on their internet, but they usually are doing it to inspire you. Mm -hmm. Like you can take so much from looking at other people outside of maybe this bubble that you're in and seeing like, oh my gosh, that's totally right. I, I follow them because I relate to them. I want to engage with them. You should be thinking your business in that same exact way. Mm -hmm. And they're all selling something, guys. They're making a commission. Oh, off of something. They got paid to do something. Nobody's I, just on there with a huge following. Oh, <laughs> doing no, nothing. I say that all the time. People are like, well, where do I find their affiliate links? I'm like, in anything that they have, anything oh, that they have. You. Look at any of their stories, look at any of the, let's say, you know, at any of their closing for cooking items, look at any of the pots and pans they're using. If they have mm -hmm. an Amazon storefront, guys, that is, they probably have an Amazon affiliate link mm -hmm. and that's what's 100%. going on. They don't probably, they, uh, that is their yeah, every <laughs> single thing. Like people will, well, I really like this house plant lady and she has mm -hmm. this thing where you can subscribe and they'll remind you it's an app and they'll remind you to water your plants. And I'm like, that's an affiliate link for the app. You can be an affiliate for apps. Oh, there's this influencer and she's awesome. She does this weight loss thing and I got the app and it gives me my meals that I'm going to do and it gives me this. And I'm like, yeah, that's an affiliate link for that app. I mean, they're all, that is the whole point. Social right. media is used to have people make money on it. It's only, you know, the internet started in 1993, guys. It's only been around for 20 years. It's going to continue to evolve. But you're so used to seeing it that you're unaware that everything you're seeing, nine times out of 10, are affiliate links or some type of online marketing. You're just not saying, you know, weight loss affiliate. <laughs> yeah. Being Susie Q, who loves to do fitness and share videos of her life, and every few videos, she's going to talk about how much she loves this app that she uses and how it's helped yeah. her. And then you go to her link and you buy it, and you didn't yep. even realize it. Exactly. And if you scroll all the way down on that page, the way that you can know is nine times out of ten, there's something on the bottom that will tell you that, yes, I 
I, I get paid to do all of this. You know? <laughs> so it's like, you got to open your eyes to that. Once you open your eyes to it, you'll realize every single thing you see on your TV, in your radio, on your podcast, everything, everything that you are surrounding yourself with, someone is doing some sort of, they're getting paid for it. So why, why wouldn't you get that, get your own real estate online? That's how I like to see it. And there's so much of it and it's going to continue to grow because like I said, it's literally only been around for 20 years and look at how much has changed from aim to what we have in Facebook now. And you know, <laughs> you know, like my face with your music. <laughs> my top eight friends. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm like, I do want to rank people again. No, <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's going to, everything's going to, it's not ever going to, the internet's not ever going to get smaller. Well, I mean, and no business exists without marketing. No, no business exists that in the world, name any business. I don't care how big, how small, no business exists without marketing. And no business no. can it sustain without being online, which means digital marketing skills. So if you want to be oh, somebody that holds skills that I, can be used by any business, learn digital marketing skills. <laughs> I do have something to say about that too. So it's very mm -hmm. funny because this is like, kind of makes me think of something, but my dad had always owned a window company growing up and he eventually started putting us in commercials, like local commercials. Cause he was like, family, it's marketing. We got to do it. So I would be in commercials and I would be like opening windows and stuff. Right. And his yep. business has totally evolved to like being fully online now mm -hmm. um, where you could get window quotes online. But my dad and a bunch of people have came to me and said, I heard I need like a funnel thing. Like my website's old. I don't even need a website, but I need to get people's emails. Like, what do I do? And because I learned the skills, I literally was able to be like, Hey, I know how to set up a funnel. And you literally can just put this out there. And then anyone who comes to your site for your window business, you can get their email and send them automatic emails. And my dad who has been in sales forever was like, what? He was like, mm -hmm. no, I'm like, yeah, you can do that. And he's like, and I said, I was like, you know, if I really ever wanted to, I could easily go to any business that I see and I could build them a funnel and I could build them a bridge page and I could build them a landing page and they could be done with this outrageous amount that they pay for marketing. I know. Sites. And I'm like, that is, that is absolutely yeah. priceless skill that I know 100% I could use over and over and over. Mm-hmm. And we've had, and, you know, I always invite our students to just follow what excites you as you're learning these skills. If you love funnel building, yeah. go do more of that. Everybody, because I know a whole lot of people that hate building funnels and would much rather outsource that down the line. And there's people out here that love to do that. There's, you yeah. know, there's, there's some that just love to create videos or to edit videos. There's love, you know, there's so many different things you can do once you have this knowledge. Oh, it's, Don't box it's yourself tenfold. in guys. How about that? Don't box yourself in. Yeah. It's tenfold. Like it's all, you can always pivot. Yeah. If you have this at like the education, you can always pivot. You can always go back and forth and scale and just move in all different directions. It can change with who you are and what's important to you now. And like, look at my life, right? My life has changed drastically in two years. Mm -hmm. And I feel like no other skills in the career force, right? Or anything like that. Can you, I almost feel like change your life, like change your lifestyle with. Right. Like yeah. if I was in a job that I was in, I was like, hey, I want to take nine vacations next year. <laughs> be, that's how many we took last year. They would be like, uh, no. No. What? Uh, I'm like, uh, okay, see ya. Like, you know, no other thing is going to let you just do what you want. But this, mm -hmm. when you have those skills and you're freelancing pretty much, you can make your life whatever it wants to be and no one can tell you no. Yeah. That's what you get to be in charge. You don't have to wait for the manager to go, okay, these are your tasks for today. But also that also means 
there's not the manager telling you what you're talking about. You have to hold your feet to the fire. You got to You hold yourself. You are your own boss. And I mean, I get it. My husband is home now and there for the first month that he was home. I just want to hang out with my family and I want to, you know, and I do, I get every breakfast with them. I get every lunch with them. I get every morning homeschooling, but I have now I sit, I go in my brand new office and I'm in there after lunch and I'm in there until sometimes when I want to make dinner, if not, my husband will fire up a hello chef And I'm proud of that. And I enjoy doing that. But before too, it was like, all I want to do is hang out with my family. But guess what? If I did that in the summer, then at 10 o'clock at night, when my family goes to sleep, I was staying up working my business. Mm -hmm. Was that great and awesome? No, but I did it because I need to do it. So it's like I had, and it would have been so easy to be like, oh, just go to sleep. You're tired. No, because doing that and showing up up every day, that's the only reason I have anything else. So, Mm -hmm. and when you really like gain that confidence and really start showing up, the more and more you're like, oh yeah, you're like, I listen to myself better. I like holding myself to the, like to the fire instead of someone else doing it. Mm -hmm. Like I like pushing myself to provide for myself and not wait on someone else telling me what I'm worth or, you know, Mm -hmm what I can provide for my family. No, you're really stepping into even more power because then you go, man, I, I am strong. I am capable. I am totally amazing. When (laughs) two years ago I would hide in a corner and nothing was possible and I just needed to be miserable. And, and, and it's okay to say, I'm looking for more in my life than just being a mom, even though you love being a mom. And it's not discrediting that because a lot of your life is so that you can be a better mom. Yes. A hundred percent. I am a thousand percent a better mom today than I ever was before. And it was because I was literally just trying to do what I thought was right. But I know that anybody that has a calling to do something more, you just hear it constantly in the back of your mind, constantly. And we think, oh, is that because I'm greedy? Is that because I'm envious? Is that because I am materialistic? And for me, it wasn't even that. I just wanted more. I wanted more time. I wanted more freedom. And Mm -hmm. it keeps showing up in your brain for a reason. And it's not for any of those reasons other than you're built different. You're made different. And that's okay. And you are allowed. But if you never go after that and you never take the steps forward, you are going to have that same calling for the rest of your life. And it's going to be a really sad day when you get 90 years old and you say, man, I really wish I would have done something for myself. You know, I have a grandma who's 94 and she looks at me now and I kind of had like a couple conversations with her and she's like, man, like you're so like bold or like you guys have really like went out there and fought after what that what you want. I wish I would have done that. And that's hard. It's hard to see your grandma at 94, wish she would have done things. But it also is like my biggest message of like, don't wait, don't mm-hmm. wait. And this is like, I know, I know we're like towards the end. This sounds like a personal note too, though. Like mm-hmm. something that I have had recently is like, I have a mom who is a single mom who's worked three jobs. She's amazing. She is like my why. And she was going to, um, retire in February and she had been working forever and all she wanted to do was retire and vacation. And then she got diagnosed with cancer yeah. and like life is short. And the biggest thing is now going into that retirement, she doesn't know if she's going to retire now because she, you know, she wants that income and she has worked so hard. And sometimes you look at that and you're like, for what then? So then have something like that happen. And her biggest regret is she's very talented with DIY and things like that. And she just never committed to doing that because she was scared. And it's like things happen and life is a lot shorter than you think. So if anyone's on here and you're just sitting there and you're not taking action, Mm -hmm. if that is not something to make you take action, I don't know what is. Because, you know, she looks at that and she's like, I'm so proud of you and it's awesome. I'm so happy you did that. But I know with everything that she's going through, it's going to be, you know, like 
gosh, I wish I would have done this sooner. So I just feel like looking at that, that's been something that's been really on my heart of just something that continues to push me and be like telling everyone like your life is your life. Take control of it. No one is coming to save you. No one's coming to change your life. No one's going to make you take the action you need to be. It's going to be you. And if you don't do it and you have that calling, you're going to regret it. You will. Yeah. Time doesn't, time's not stopping. It's not stopping. Oh, I look at my kids and I'm like, my oh, daughter's yeah. nine, nine. Next month. You know, at nine, they're halfway out of your home. Mm -hmm. Oh, I sat here with my husband a few days ago and was like, okay, so one's already out in college and our number two is like, this is our last summer of vacation. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's wild, right? I'm like, I was like, oh, you know, like, how am I? There's no way I have a kid that's nine. I mean, I look like I was like a teen mom. Like, and then my husband's like, no, you don't. <laughs> All right. So going back, I'm, I'm going to call out one of our comments because we're going to help okay. her. Okay. I love it. So Linda, I bought the blueprint seven months ago and I still haven't launched because I'm stuck trying to get my funnel done, but it's 80% done. But man, I can't wait to be good enough to help others do it. Linda, I want you to put post on the funnel. Just get it out there and move on. I'm sure it's good yes. enough. I'm sure it's good enough. And you know what? I sat, I sat on my funnel. I sat at the table and I called, I was on support with click funnels. And then I literally had to, the only thing I had to do to fix my funnel. I sat there for three hours crying with my coffee cup. And the mm -hmm. only thing I had to do is go back and watch one day slower and pause it and switch one click, mm -hmm. one click. So yeah. there is support there. There is just go re go through and you might just have to switch one click, but get mm -hmm. it out there. And if you, I don't care if you have your funnel done or not, you should be posting. You should be posting mm -hmm. somewhere. You got to drive mm -hmm. followers to even want anyone to go into your funnel. Mm -hmm. So you, once people start knocking on your door, asking for whatever it is that you're promoting, you're mm -hmm. going to get that funnel done real quick. Linda, hop on support 101 and we're going to get your funnel live immediately. Okay, yeah. I'm going to let all of our coaches know. Let's help you through this roadblock. Hop on Support 101. It's every You'll day, it once a month on Saturdays. So hop on and let's let's get you over this hurdle and move you to the next, tackle the next roadblock after this one. Because that's what this business is all about, right? It's just exactly. going after the new, the new thing of the day and handling it. Handle yes. it like a boss. <laughs> yes. I love it. Oh, this has been such a great conversation. Em, I always enjoy talking with you. I love hanging out with you at Mastermind. You're yes. always a phenomenal speaker. I know you will be back speaking in the yes. near future at one of our events as well. I love um, the Mastermind just give me so much. I never have mm -hmm. felt more fueled or on fire after them. Like, oh, it's just, it's such a good environment. It is. And, you know, I feel the same way, even, you know, as a legendary team member, director of marketing, but there's something, it sounds silly, but magical about them. It's just oh, it about really seeing everyone in 3D and hanging out. Um, and I, I love Mastermind. I absolutely love them. I love them. Like-minded people who get it, who just want to encourage you, who want, like, it just, You've never felt more accepted ever in any other place. I've never felt more accepted in any other place than when I'm at a mastermind. You know what? That's what it is. It's like I am actually with my people. Yes. A thousand percent. Right? I feel content. Like I feel even like if I'm getting nervous to speak, I still just feel calm. And I rarely feel calm in any place other than my home. So that says something. Yep, definitely. Yeah, that's it's really I don't feel like I'm oh, I like oh, I got to go do this. Like it's just no. like oh, it's my people. They get to hang out with them in real life. I love this. <laughs> exactly. And it's weird like usually I'm like late to wake up and stuff, but when I'm there I'm like I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to be like everyone just makes me like 
I'm living my best life. I'm going to be the healthiest I've ever been. I'm going to be on fire. It's like, you just feel like you're firing on all cylinders. Well, there's a lot of people working out at Mastermind. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I just go on a nice leisurely walk, but maybe I'll get there one day. I go down and get coffee and there's people coming up from the gym. I'm like, like sweating. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> right? I'm like, okay, we're on a different Mastermind level. <laughs> Right. I'm like, I will get there. I'm focused on I'm focused on something else right now. Right. Like, where's my right. donut, guys? I, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, of course, always welcome back. Stay connected. Thank yes. you for sharing your story, being vulnerable, being Thank open you for having me. Your journey. And uh it's always a pleasure to chat with you. And uh thanks for all you do. You know what? Thanks for you. You're an absolute joy and light. So I'm just excited that you're able to chat with me today and I can go into my day feeling really good. So yeah. thank you for giving that to everybody too. I know I hear that from everyone that the second that they interact with you, they feel really good. So Aww. I love being here and I can't wait to be back. Yes, definitely. All right. We will talk soon and I'll see you at a future mastermind. <laughs> Bye everybody. Go take action. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, everyone. Oh, if you came on late, go to the beginning, watch that bad boy, write down, take action today, get ideas from this interview, post content, get your funnel live, do all the things and just start, just start. Go follow M on TikTok and Instagram at M the affiliate, E-M the affiliate all connected. I'm also going to put out this warning. There are Many fake accounts of many of the top marketers that are out there in any niche. There's tons of fake accounts if they start getting a lot of followers. Doesn't matter what niche it is, there are fake accounts out there. I know M has tons of imposter accounts pretending to be her, but I want to put this out there for you. No marketer, especially marketers in our community, will cold DM you. M does not have time to reach out for the first time and cold DM you and offer you crypto or try to sell you something for $10,000 through a WhatsApp. That's, that's a no good thing. You are being scammed. Please don't fall for it. It's one thing if you reach out first and they respond to your DM, but they will not reach out to you first and try to sell you on something. That's not what we teach here. It's not what the marketers that we know that are quality um, and that are there to serve, they allow you the space to reach out to them first when it comes to sending DMs. So do not respond to anyone that DMs you first. Report the account to Facebook, to TikTok, wherever, block them and get them out of your life, okay? That is a fake account. Um, but go follow M on TikTok and Instagram at M the affiliate E M T H E A F F I L I A T E. Look for misspellings of that. That means it's a fake account. This is her account to find her on TikTok and Instagram. Go follow her. Let her know that you saw her interview today. And as always, stay legendary. Peace.